Good morning. Over a century ago, Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act to protect competition in the marketplace. As the Supreme Court has explained, the, quote, central evil addressed by Section 1 of the Act is the elimination of competition that would otherwise exist, including competition on prices. When the Sherman Act was passed, an anti-competitive scheme might have looked like robber barons shaking hands at a secret meeting. Today, it looks like landlords using mathematical algorithms to align their rents. But antitrust law does not become obsolete simply because competitors find new ways to unlawfully act in concert. And Americans should not have to pay more in rent simply because a company has found a new way to scheme with landlords to break the law. So today, after a nearly two-year investigation, the Justice Department, joined by eight states, has sued RealPage, a commercial real estate software company, for violating the Sherman Antitrust Act. RealPage sells landlords what it calls, quote, revenue management software. We allege that this software is developed, marketed, and sold to enable landlords to sidestep vigorous competition in the rental market. Competing landlords agree to submit to RealPage on a daily basis their most sensitive non-public information, including rental rates, lease terms, and projected vacancies. RealPage then combines this data from competing landlords and feeds it into an algorithm that provides real-time pricing recommendations back to the competing landlords. But as we allege, these are more than just recommendations. RealPage actively polices landlords' compliance with those recommendations. It also monitors landlords' other policies by, for example, trying to stop concessions that landlords use to attract or retain renters. A large number of landlords effectively agree to outsource their pricing decisions to RealPage by using a, quote, auto-accept setting, which effectively permits RealPage to determine the price a renter will pay. Landlords understand what their arrangement with RealPage gets them. As one said, quote, I always like this product because your algorithm uses proprietary data from other subscribers to suggest, suggest rents and terms. That's classic price fixing, close quote. And RealPage understand what, understands what it's doing too. In advertising its service to landlords, RealPage frequently says that a, quote, rising tide raises all ships. As a real page vice president explained, this phrase means that, quote, there is greater good in everybody succeeding versus essentially trying to compete against one another. But essentially trying to compete against one another is what our free market economy is all about. And ensuring such competition is what our antitrust laws are all about. Americans spend more money on housing than any other expense. Tens of millions of Americans are renters, and almost half of those households spend close to a third of their hard-earned income on rent. Under the antitrust laws, landlord, landlords, like any other competitors, may not share with each other their confidential, sensitive data in a way that permits them to align how they price their products in this case, apartments, and thus cause renters to pay more than they would in a competitive market. Using software as a sharing mechanism or calling it, quote, artificial intelligence revenue management, close quote, as RealPage does, does not immunize the scheme from Sherman Act liability. The Justice Department takes seriously its responsibility to protect Americans from illegal conduct that undermines competition and drives up prices. We will continue, continue to aggressively enforce the antitrust laws and protect the American people from those who would violate them. I applaud the attorneys and staff of the department's antitrust division for their outstanding work on this case on behalf of the American people. Thank you all. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Attorney General. 
Since the beginning of this administration, our approach to corporate misconduct across the Justice Department has been simple, it's been straightforward, and it's been relentless. We identify the most serious wrongdoers, whether individuals or companies, and we focus our full energy on holding them accountable. Today's complaint against RealPage illustrates this strategy in action. In this country, we've had laws for over a century that promote healthy competition. And competition is the bedrock of our market economy, like how a strong foundation supports a house. When that competition, that foundation, is undermined, the house stands on shaky ground, compromising its stability and the security of those who live there. Today, we're seeing this phenomenon play out in our nation's rental housing market. As alleged in our complaint, RealPage is using technology to undermine competition in the rental market and to harm consumers in the process. By feeding sensitive data into a sophisticated algorithm, RealPage has found a modern way to violate a century-old law through systematic coordination of rental housing prices. Healthy competition in the rental housing market requires two key ingredients. The market must be dictated by open and honest competition among landlords, and renters must be able to negotiate prices with landlords without the specter of collusion to arrive at a fair deal for everyone involved. But RealPage has shut away those ingredients, changed the locks, and thrown away the keys. And they've done that by selling software to landlords, software that operates off an algorithm to drive pricing, among other things. As alleged, RealPage's systems rely on confidential and sensitive pricing data from landlords. They run this data through a machine learning model to set prices, then recommend them to landlords. And through this process, they enable landlords to avoid negotiating with tenants without concern that they'll be undercut by competitors. That's collusion, and that's against the law. Let's be clear. Algorithms don't operate in a law-free zone. After all, humans create them. Our laws will always apply to the people behind the machines and the companies behind the algorithms. This idea is core to how the department is addressing technology-enabled crimes, particularly those that employ artificial intelligence and machine learning. Because while the law governing AI is sure to develop over time, our existing laws and our enduring legal tools, including the antitrust laws, already offer a firm foundation. So make no mistake, training a machine to break the law is still breaking the law. Price coordination using AI is still price coordination, and monopolization advanced by an algorithm is still monopolization. I want to thank the women and men of the Antitrust Division and Assistant Attorney General Jonathan Cantor for his leadership and their hard work on this matter. And I want to thank them for promoting healthy competition and fairness across this critical market and for protecting consumers, renters, and landlords alike. No company or individual is above the law, and today's action, once again, makes that crystal clear. With that, I'd like to invite the Acting Associate Attorney General Ben Miser to the podium. Thank you, Deputy Attorney General Monaco. I would like to echo the Attorney General's and the Deputy Attorney General's thanks to the leadership and staff of the Antitrust Division. They have exhibited the utmost professionalism and dedication throughout the long-running investigation that led to today's complaint. This civil action against RealPage exemplifies the department's commitment to combating anti-competitive practices that increase the prices Americans pay on a daily basis. The complaint alleges that RealPage uses its software to collect and share 
landlords competitively sensitive information about rental prices, projected vacancies, and lease terms. The software then feeds landlords daily pricing recommendations, taking the guesswork out of understanding what competing landlords are doing. As a result, landlords can align rental prices and tenants are limited in their ability to successfully negotiate counter offers or to seek discounts. This type of conduct is egregious, but it is unfortunately not limited to the rental housing industry. We've seen unfair and illegal pricing practices in many different industries, and staff in the antitrust division and the department more broadly are working tirelessly to combat these practices wherever they arise. For example, the antitrust division is currently litigating a challenge against a company that we allege uses similar strategies to facilitate information sharing among meat processors, leading to higher prices for kitchen staples like chicken, turkey, and pork. And the division recently shut down another information exchange that helped processors to suppress wages and benefits for employees working in poultry processing plants. Separately, in the criminal antitrust context, we've worked to root out price-fixing conduct among pharmaceutical companies. Last year, we reached resolutions with two drug companies that admitted to fixing the prices of essential medicines used to lower cholesterol and treat eye and skin infections. Those resolutions required the companies to donate $50 million in drugs pay $255 million in criminal penalties, and divest the drug product lines that were a core part of the conspiracy. We've also seen unfair pricing practices in the transportation industry. Our civil division and the US attorney's offices have prosecuted individuals for hiking the prices of used cars by rolling back odometer readings and falsif falsifying vehicle titles. And the civil division has also sued companies for forcing car buyers to pay for expensive insurance that they do not want and do not need. The department remains committed to fighting these and other unlawful pricing practices, regardless of how and where they might arise. Today's suit against RealPage reflects our continued commitment to promoting competition and advancing economic opportunity and equity. I'll now turn it over to Assistant Attorney General Jonathan Cantor. Thank you very much. All right, let's do this. Renters deserve the benefits of vigorous competition. In prosperous times, that competition should limit rent hikes. In harder times, Competition should bring down rent, making housing more affordable. RealPage has built a business out of frustrating the natural forces of vigorous competition. In the words of RealPage, a rising tide raises all ships. This is more than just marketing. It's literally the cost of housing for millions of Americans. For RealPage, that rising tide of rents means more profits. For landlords, that rising tide means more revenues from higher rents. But renters are the ones left to pay the price. For renters, that rising tide means less money for food, health care, child care, and education. For renters, that rising tide means less money for families to make ends meet. Today, we filed an antitrust lawsuit against RealPage to fight the rising tide of high rent, to restore competition, and to make housing more affordable for millions of people across the country. Our lawsuit is best understood in the words of RealPage's own executives. Here are just a handful of examples. RealPage says its software enables landlords to, and this is a direct quote, drive every possible opportunity to increase price, even in the most downward trending or unexpected conditions. But independent decision making by landlords, not RealPage, should determine rental prices. RealPage encourages landlords to, quote, 
eliminate concessions, close quote. But competition, not real page, should determine whether a renter gets free a month of rent when signing a lease. Real page tells landlords that it would prefer, again, another direct quote, everybody succeeding versus essentially trying to compete against one another in a way that actually keeps the entire industry down. But that's not how free markets work. Competition among landlords, not real page, should determine prices for renters in our free market system. And when a landlord asked a real page executive, who are your competitors? The response from the executive was, and I quote, our revenue management solution does not have any true competitors, close quote. But honest businesses should not have to break the law just to compete with RealPage and its monopoly. These quotes are just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many, many more examples in our extensive complaint, which spans over 100 pages. The time has come to stop this illegal conduct. I want to thank the antitrust division's attorneys, paralegals, economists, data scientists, and professional staff, many of whom are in the back today. They're incredible for making this lawsuit possible. Over nearly two years, they have worked nonstop, going document by document, in line by line of code, to understand RealPage and its anti-competitive scheme. Together with our state partners, this team has proven that antitrust law enforcement can and will keep pace with changes in the technology of lawbreaking. On one hand, we used our traditional economic and investigative tools, such as reviewing internal documents and taking deposition testimony. On the other hand, we also used data science, science experts to interrogate the code so that we can understand how algorithms use sensitive information from landlords to recommend and set prices. Our lawsuit demonstrates that modern day wrongdoers cannot hide behind software algorithms and artificial intelligence to violate the law. Throughout this investigation, we learned that the modern machinery of algorithms and AI can be even more effective than the smoke-filled rooms of the past. You don't need a PhD to know that algorithms can make coordination among competitors easier. Algorithms process far more information far more rapidly than humans ever could. The technical capabilities of software can enhance a competitor's ability to extract gains, tip the market in favor of monopolies, and undermine the competitive process. While these modern technologies might have been unimaginable in 1890 when Congress passed the Sherman Act, Congress knew then what we still know is true today. A restraint of trade is still a restraint of trade. And monopolization is still monopolization. The antitrust laws had something to say about it then, and the antitrust laws have something to say about it now. And let me be extremely clear. When companies use artificial intelligence to set artificially high prices, the antitrust laws have something to say about that too. We are joined in sending this important message by the attorneys general and their terrific staffs from North Carolina, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Minnesota, Oregon, Tennessee, and Washington. We are honored to stand with them to protect competition on behalf of American renters. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, um, I, I guess you know this uh, this lawsuit uh, really does so give one explanation of why you know the rent is too damn high around the country. I'm wondering whether your investigation is still ongoing uh, as far as the landlords and their complicity with using this software. Obviously, without them, it doesn't work. And I'm wondering if you know people looking at this uh, this lawsuit would wonder uh, why aren't the, they part of uh, part of the the relief being being sought here. And I don't know if you want my, my off topic right now or you no, want let's to do one at a time. Okay. Um, Jonathan may not want to answer your off topic, so. Okay. 
Uh, you're right, everybody knows the rent is too damn high, and we allege this is one of the reasons why. When uh, companies, uh, and in this case landlords, um, uh, use a software tool to facilitate uh, cooperation with respect to rents, they violate the antitrust laws, they make rents higher than they would otherwise be, and they prevent rents from going down. The same process can be used in other industries. I think Ben Miser talked about a number of industries in which we're looking at the same kinds of problems, and these investigations are really the heart of antitrust. I'll give Jonathan a chance to say some more. Sure. Um, I can only speak to the four corners of our complaint, which focuses on the anti-competitive conduct of RealPage, but also has extensive information about how landlords have used the RealPage software in order to um, uh, distort the competitive process for rental prices. Beyond that, I can't comment any further investigations. Uh, and, and off topic. And my off topic, yeah. um, there was a report recently, uh, just the last few days, uh, about the Deputy Attorney General uh, reaching out to White House officials to say uh, that she would have handled the, uh, the, the, the investigation to the form, into the President's uh, handling of classified documents. Uh, differently from the way you handled it, and I wondered whether you or uh, the Deputy Attorney General would like to address that uh, and whether that's true. All right, let, let me begin. Um, Lisa and I have worked together now for many years. She's been an enormously successful um, uh, counsel to me on this, and we have seen eye to eye really on everything. Uh, she's told me that she's never said anything like this to anyone, and of course I believe her. Um, Lisa, if you want to speak some more. Statement is issued on this, and um, while we don't comment on recusals, it would be completely inappropriate to do so. Um, I've got nothing to add to the statement, and of course, I don't disagree with the Attorney General with what he just said. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Attorney General, you've had this remarkably successful historic prosecution from the Capitol siege. You had these grand juries indict 1,500 people. Your jury trial record, I think, is perfect. What do you make of this pledge in the election to pardon everybody you've prosecuted? Look, we have prosecuted people we believe um, are responsible for an attack on the Capitol and a threat to uh, the uh, peaceful transfer of power. Uh, the convictions indicate that both juries and judges have agreed with our uh, charges. Um, Pardons are another matter, and I really don't have anything to say about that. Alex? Um, one on topic and off topic. Uh, you mentioned that Americans spend more on housing than any other expense. Is there a dollar figure that is accompanying this lawsuit that you assess that renters were directly harmed? I mean, is there any macro impact that this may have actually had an impact on inflation in recent years? I'm going to let uh, Jonathan answer that um, specific question. Sure. Um, there's extensive information in our complaint about the impact of the RealPage software and the usage by landlords. Our complaint explains that RealPage has over 3 million units nationwide that use the software at issue in our complaint. Uh, we talk about how it uses confidential information, competitively sensitive information from over 16 million units across the country, and that RealPage's market penetration in the markets that we discuss in our complaint range from 30% to 60% and even higher by bedroom count. The impact of the conduct is substantial, and we detail that in extensive detail, ex, um, expansive detail, um, and uh, throughout our complaint. I guess as a follow-up on Scott's question, you're sitting in these hearings with um, prosecutors and judges at the courthouse down the street. They're, they're increasingly expressing concerns about the upcoming transfer of power and the potential danger of an, another, another January 6th. Do you share those concerns at all? Um, I think our prosecutions have made clear what we think about people who try to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power, which is an essential and fundamental element of our democracy. I quibble about whether we have 1,500 or slightly less than 1,500, but we have way more than 1,400 now prosecutions, and we have a substantial number of convictions. I think that's shown to everybody how seriously we take an effort to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power. The last January 6th, the coming January 6th, and every January 6th after that. I want to make clear to anybody who is thinking about interfering with that, 
They can see what we've done with respect to the January 6th prosecutions, and the Justice Department will continue to protect our democracy. Last question, Dave. Um, we learned today that five uh, Secret Service agents who were associated with the Butler rally were put on an administrative leave. First of all, <clears throat> do you have a reaction to that? And secondly, could there be any criminal charges? Can anyone face criminal charges because of the security failure that day? Uh, I don't know anything about the particular uh, disciplinary actions that are, are being taken. I think the most that I can say is what the uh, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security and the Acting Director of the Secret Service have said, which is this was a security failure. Um, and the, there is in, uh, both an internal and an external uh, independent investigation of what happened that the Secretary of Transportation has set up, and there's a congressional task force on the same subject, uh, and um, hopefully they, and I know that they will uh, provide lessons learned uh, to prevent such a failure from happening in the future. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.